On the surface, Kadocha appears to be a family-friendly kids anime about a young child actress and her crazy antics at school and on stage. Part of what makes this anime and manga series so special is the paradox of the cutesy and lighthearted nature of the artwork and setting, combined with the dark and mature themes it presents in its plots and scenarios. Within the comedy of Kadocha, there are deep truths that we can relate to the real world and ourselves. The characters in this series feel like real people, and it captures something I feel no other shoujo anime and manga series captures so perfectly, growing up and losing childhood innocence. I would even argue that this is the biggest theme of the series, maybe even the main reason author Miho Obana created the story. It perfectly conveys the sense of growing out of childhood and learning about the cruel realities of adulthood. Even at the start of the series, when the main cast is around the ages of 11 and 12, they go through many hardships that force them to be strong in ways that an adult would have to be in their situations. In this video, I want to explore this theme of growing up and discuss how it affects each of the characters, as well as relate the concepts and situations back to the real world. Again, the author of this series, Miho Obana, did an incredible job at capturing this in the story in a way that's extremely relatable, as well as entertaining. So let's take a look and reminisce about some of the moments throughout the series where our main characters had to be strong and grow up fast. Our first experiences in life typically revolve around our parents, or those who are in charge of our well-being, such as a grandparent, other family members, or even godparents. We tend to look up to them and imitate their behavior as we get older, because it's the first thing that we see. People are like mirrors, and we tend to be like those who are around us in some ways, whether we want to accept this or not. Take Sana for example. Her adoptive mother Misako is very eccentric and random, and we can see this behavior in Sana throughout the series. Even though Misako is not her biological mother, in my opinion she influenced Sana's personality greatly. We can see this with Akito and his family. As I have discussed in a previous video, which I will link below, Akito's family's perception of him influenced his behavior and self-perception as well, and this affected him unfortunately in a very negative way. It made him keep to himself, and think of himself as a bad person. Even Suyoshi deals with the effects his father had on his family, and has to realize that his dad is very flawed despite loving him. As the series progresses, we learn that the adults here don't really have it all together themselves. Kido's dad eventually realizes how neglectful he has been towards his children, and we see Sana's manager Ray dealing with the consequences and choices regarding how he behaves towards Sana. In fact, it's the situation at the beginning of the series with Ray and Sana that is one of the many storylines that conveys the overarching theme of loss of innocence and coming of age. At the beginning of the series, Sana tells everyone that she knows that her manager Ray is her boyfriend. At first, this seems extremely strange since Ray is a lot older than her, in fact, there's a 10 years difference. Uh, we realize pretty quickly, however, that the feelings are not mutual, thank goodness. The reason Ray enables Sana's behavior at this time is because he feels that he owes it to her since she helped him get his life back together after he had been homeless for a while. <laughs> Why are those people sitting in the street like that? So, how is it? It's good, huh? I think so too. That's my favorite place to eat. Hey, hey, you don't have a house, right? You wanna come to my house? Mom, I'm back! I hope it's okay. I got a friend with me. Remember, he's that man he said was a homeless bum. What? <laughs> Look, Ray! The truth is, I owe her everything. Ray! <laughs> if not for her, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So, even though she was so young, I decided that if she truly felt that strongly about me, I owed it to her to take those feelings seriously. Even though Ray knows that this can't go on forever, he continues to play the part of Sana's boyfriend out of his gratitude towards her. Finally, when the time comes that he can't play the part anymore, Sana is in disbelief and is heartbroken. Her mother also explains to her that in no way could a man Ray's age be in love with her. It's at this moment when Sana realizes her entire world is a lie. And this is where we get a glimpse at the main theme of the story of Kadocha. 
In order to grow, we have to experience painful things, and most of the time it's loss. Loss of a family member, a breakup, even growing apart from close friends from childhood. Also, learning how adults in life really are can be shocking. As someone in their late 20s who looked up to my parents as any child would, there were things I learned as an adult that changed my perception of them. I don't mean this in a cold or offensive way, but as a child they seem like gods who could do no wrong. But when you get older, you realize that they are human and they make mistakes as well. I think growing and maturing doesn't stop at 18, and I think the story of Kadocha conveys just that. Both the children and the adults in this story learn and grow from their mistakes. We see that Rei clearly feels bad about leading Sana on, even though it seemed like a good decision at the time to make the little girl who saved his life happy. In the case of Akito, we also see that his dad wants the family dynamic to change after he realizes he was neglecting his children and makes an effort to spend more time with his family. During most of the first half of the series after the storyline, the romance between Sana and Akito is setting up. However, there is a moment at the beginning of the middle school arc where Sana reflects on love and her time with Rei while talking to Tsuyoshi. It's after this moment that we see where Sana is in regards to love. Another aspect of growing up is learning about love and what it really feels like for yourself and from others. From personal experience, I also had to learn what love was through a few failed relationships and even understanding the relationship between my divorced parents and why things fell apart. It's important that we go through hardships to understand our mistakes and why it was a mistake in the first place. Learning how to love and learning what love is is one of Sana's biggest lessons throughout the series. She's really dense when it comes to Akito's feelings for her, and the introduction of Fuka's character and Fuka's interest in Akito helped her realize her own feelings of love through jealousy and sadness. It's unfortunate, but sometimes we have to go through pain to realize what we truly want. Once Akito and Sana are finally together in the manga, the two still have many difficulties that they have to face such as Akito being forced to move to America because of his broken arm. The infamous Let's Become Adult scene shows the two of them making the decision to, well, you know, I'm trying to keep this video PG. Anyway, Masako walks in on them and gives them a lecture about how they are too young to make the decision to do something like that. I also think this fits into the overall theme of growing up nicely, as I feel it's important to take the time to think clearly before becoming one with another person. Making a hasty decision, even if it's not about something like this, can lead to strong feelings of regret. Another part of growing up is thinking about the consequences of your actions before doing something. Just because it feels good at the time, doesn't mean it will benefit you in the long run. There are many, many moments like these within the Kadocha series that show each of the characters growing out of their childhood selves. Sana becomes more intuitive and understanding of love. Akito matures by choosing karate over delinquency. Tsuyoshi so realizes his ability to stay strong and support his family as the man of the house after his father leaves. Natsumi is able to resist being with Sana even after she asks him out towards the end of the manga. Fuka is also able to let Akito go because she realizes he needs to be with Sana. And the adults in the series learn from their mistakes as well, such as the case of Rei mentioned earlier. That's what I love about this series. No character is the same by the end of it and each character grows in a way that's admirable. Kadocha is one of the best coming-of-age stories, and I would argue that children and preteens should read and watch the series because of the lessons within it. Not to mention that every character is relatable in one way or another. Personally, watching Kadocha made me a happier person because it felt good to finally watch something that captured the struggles of growing older, even as someone who's in their late 20s. Even though I'm well past the age of a young adult, I still found these characters to be relatable since I'm still growing as a person as well. As I said before, I don't think we stop growing and maturing at 18. It's a lifelong process. Unfortunately, we do lose our childhood innocence as we are growing up, but it's only so we can become better people. Thank you for watching this video. It's a bit all over the place, but I've had this idea in my head for a while and did a little free writing with the script. If there's any good examples of this theme in the series that I missed, please comment below. I love having these discussions in the comments and on Twitter, and I really appreciate it. And as always, please like and subscribe for more Kadocha videos in the future. See ya!